Welcome to session 13, part D. Okay, in part E, I'm going to discuss our exam, but before I do that, I want to give a kind of a, a life lesson, uh, kind of a story of a, a general principle which is related to economics, um, but uh, more, there's, there's some, uh, it's a general principle that's related to test taking, especially to, with online classes. I'll get to why it's related in a second. But um, first, a uh, little bit of background, scientific background. Uh, it turns out some biologists have, have done th these experiments before. Well, well, they'll get chimpanzees and have the chimpanzee uh, try to guess which box this tasty food is. They'll, they'll put, say, blueberries or some, some food that the chimpanzees really like, and some boxes will be empty. And the key is that the chimpanzee is supposed to point to the box where the food is, and they get the food if they, if they guess correctly. Then in the experiment, what they do is they allow uh, humans, they allow one human to point to a box, okay? And then eventually what they do is they let the chimpanzees Somehow they have a curtain behind them. The, the chimpanzee doesn't know which food is put in the box, but they'll have it one one case where there'll be one human who gets to see which box the food is put in. Then they'll have another human who doesn't get to see. They'll have those two humans come in, and the two humans are pointing to two different boxes. And what they try to see, what the biologists are trying to see, if the chimpanzee can figure out that one of these humans has more information than the other one. Even if they're both trying to tell them which box the food is in, only one of the humans knows. And they're trying to see if the chimpanzee can look to see, oh, that human saw when they put food in the box. Oh, that one has better information. I'll trust that human. Okay. Some chimpanzees can't get that. They, they can't try to put themselves in another animal's shoes and think what information does, does he or she have. I want to argue some humans cannot do that either. And um, But the good thing is economics training actually helps you to, to do this. So um, before I get to explain exactly what I mean by that... Um, let me give you a, a story that happened to me a very long time ago uh, when I was still single. Um, uh, I was living, not, it's really not relevant, but I was living in Cambridge, Massachusetts, and uh, uh, I had an apartment. I had a landlady who had, I think, only two units that she owned, two apartments, and one she lived in, another uh, she rented, and I was the renter. And uh, one day she calls me and says, um, you know, look, I want to get a loan or renegotiate a loan, somehow a loan from the bank, and I'm using the apartment that you're living in as collateral. I said, okay, great. Um, she said, well, here's how it involves you. I said, I want to tell the bank that I'm living there. It turns out that y you get a better rate and get a better interest rate if it's owner occupied. Now she wasn't living in there, but she was going to lie to the banks. Now, now it turns out that's that's against the law. She could get some, uh, could have gotten a pretty serious fine. Probably not jail time, but it's close. This is pretty bad though when you're a deceitful um, and uh, try to fool a bank in, in this way. There's laws against it. Now she asked me. Said now to do this, um, all I want to do, the bank will tip me off. They'll tell me when they're going to inspect the place. Would you mind if I put some of my belongings there? I'm going to put some of my clothes in your closet, the closet you're renting, and maybe put some photos of me and put some um, uh, women's bathroom products. Since I was living there by myself, and so I'll put some women's bathroom products just so that the bank people don't get suspicious. And I I was a little wary of that, but I said, okay. Now, I'm an accessory. That was probably illegal of what, what, what I was doing, allowing her to do that. So um, she told me that. Then she uh, one day she calls me and says, oh, um, uh, in five days, whatever, the, the bank is going to come. And uh, so on that day, 
you, you know, we just want you to know that's when they're come to uh, look at things. So it'll be during the day when you weren't there, aren't there, but I just want you to know that's, you know, I'm going to put some, some of my clothes in your closet and, and so on. So I'd forgotten all about it when that fifth day came along. And it turns out I, I had a date that night. And this was like, it's probably first or second or third date uh, with this woman. And things went really well. And after the date, I invited her into the, to my apartment, see if she would you know, like to come over. And, and um, we're walking into the building. First thing I do is I say, well, you, if you don't mind, I'm going to walk by the mail room, just grab my mail since we're going to my apartment. And fortunately, I looked on the board where usually it said the number of the apartment, something like 106, and then usually it says 106 gross clothes. And I looked at it and said, 106 gross clothes slash the name of my landlady. <laughs> and so she told the bank that we were living together. And so then it hit me that my date, oh my God, we're going to go into my apartment and there's going to be a bunch of women's things. And my date's going to think I'm married or at least have a, a live-in girlfriend. And I, I have like 20 yards to think what I'm going to say. And by the time I get to the door, I say, I'm just going to tell the truth. And I say, you know, look, here's what happened. And I have a landlady. Um, she's getting alone. And I said, I'm going to open the door. I don't know what it's going to look like in there, but it just hit me that this is going to happen. So sure enough, we get in and there's women's clothes in the closet and, and women's bathroom products in the bathroom. And um, um, a few days later, I call up my date and, and I say, you know, uh, I want you to tell me um, what percent chance you think I was telling the truth. And if you say 100%, I'm just going to think you're stupid. Okay. Now, I was telling the truth, but my date did not know I was telling the truth. And, and, uh, and she actually told me, so, well, you know, I believed you at the time, but when I told people at work, everyone just looked at me and felt sorry for me, like I was being duped so, so much. So um, the, the point is that a lot of people if they were in my shoes. To my credit, I understood that my date would not believe me, would probably not believe me, or at least would not be certain that I was telling the truth. She would, if she's a reasonable person, would be skeptical of me. Now, there's a lot of people that say, oh, how dare her not believe me? I was telling the truth. How, how, could, how dare you not believe me? Well, that's an important um, life lesson, an important um personality trait, to be able to put yourself in the other person's shoes and to think, what information does that person have? What would a reasonable person believe if they got the information that I know they have? So I, and I realize that my date, as a reasonable person, might not believe that story, I was saying, and she would be very justified not to believe that. Okay. So to my credit, I, I was like one of the chimpanzees who can put myself in the shoes of the humans and think about what information uh, they have. Now, a lot of people can't. Okay. Um, now, how does this affect ex exams? Now, when we're doing exams, especially online, and you're doing using Respondus and Lockdown, um, these things are very dicey. It is, it's often very easy to cheat. And things like if your computer breaks down, um, be sure to email me very quickly. If you don't, I'm going to be a little skeptical that maybe you were cheating. Maybe you did start emailing some friends. Maybe you did look up some things on the internet. And you, and you think, how dare him think that? I, that's, I, I wouldn't do that. Well, I don't know that. Okay? So if you put yourself in my shoes... The, the, your, your teacher and, and know that I don't I can't see what's in your head I don't know if you're an honest person and in fact I happen to know I have a daughter who's college age and she recently took a test and uh, this was at Michigan State but I think it's pretty representative of colleges on one exam it was done online uh, my daughter told me yeah I think two-thirds of all the students cheated on this she had some evidence that they were emailing each other, giving answers. So I, I know lots of college students cheat. So when you think, but I'm in the, I'm the one third who doesn't. Well, I don't know that. Okay. So always be careful 
if, if something bad happens, like the computer breaks down, be ready. Always try to email me as quickly as you can. Be ready. We can to take the exam as quickly as you can. Do things wherever you can to take photos of the screen, okay? Whatever you can. Just remember, I can't see inside your head. I, if you, even if you are an honest person, I don't know that, okay? Help me out and um, relieve any skepticism I might have that, that you, you might be cheating. Um, uh, related, okay, so I didn't let you use a calculator. A lot of people cut mad at me and I think thought, oh, he's just a mean person. That's why he won't let us use a calculator. Try to put yourself in my shoes and think, okay, one, I don't know which students are cheating, which are not. We're doing an online exam. It's so much easier to, if I let you use calculators, you can't tell from my standpoint, even when we had the, the camera on you from Respondus, that might be a cell phone. It, okay. And for that reason, I got to eliminate cheating. So we, we the, the best way to do that is not to allow calculators. Now put yourself in my shoes. If I'm doing that, I'm probably not going to give any problem that has arithmetic that is too hard. Okay. And the, the last exam, I don't think I gave very hard arithmetic at all. Uh, but I hope you'll, you can do that. Be like the chimpanzees who can understand, the, the humans that, that can understand the information that someone else has. Okay. Um, uh, and by the way, one, one more point. Uh, so I said a lot of people can't do that. They, they just don't have the, the, the ability to put themselves in the other person's shoes and to think what information does that person have. Um, but economics is a good exercise for teaching you how to do that. Um, one part of our class is we talk about unintended consequences. The average person, when there's a new policy, they'll just assume, oh, everyone else is like an automaton, a machine that just keeps on doing whatever they were doing before. But an economist, we all try to put ourselves in the other person's shoes and to think, well, they have goals and preferences. What are they going to do? How are they going to respond to that policy? They're going to maximize their own well-being. Their own well-being. They're going to change their behavior. Once all that behavior changes in response to that new policy, you're going to have new consequences. We call unintended things you didn't think about when you didn't put yourselves in the other person's shoes. Now, economists. We're trained to do that, to look for these unintended consequences. So that's one thing how economics helps you. A, a particular branch of economics that helps you a lot to do this is called game theory. And um, I won't get too much into what it involves, but it's like a chess game. So when you're playing chess, the key is, is that you need to think what the board looks like from your op opponent's side. You think, if I move this, what's my opponent? He's trying to, to win. How's my opponent going to respond to this? And you also have to do this one step further. You, you think, well, my opponent is going to respond optimally, but he's also thinking, or, or let's get she, she, my opponent that is a woman, is thinking how he, Tim, how me, is going to respond to her responding to me. Okay, and you can do this three steps like that. And they, you know, they say in chess you always need to be three or four or five moves ahead. Then to do that, you have to be thinking like your opponent. Not only that, thinking like how your opponent thinks you are thinking. And you know, how your opponent thinks you are thinking about your opponent, and so on. Okay, so that's game theory, and like I said, that uh, is also a, a really good exercise for um, helping you to try to put yourselves in the other person's shoes and try to. Think what information is in their head and try to think um, how they may respond. Okay, so that is part D. See you in part E.